Okay, now I'm going to take you through how to use the combustion settings. So this is a slightly different solver than the fluid wine, a bit, bit more complicated, but it's, it could give you different results. So it's, I've, I've given both, both solvers so you can choose whatever works best and what, what you find is easier for you. So the combustion solver, this actually works actually more about fuel and heat. So the heat will cause the reaction like a bit like a kind of real kind of physics simulation. So you can actually see here, we actually, for the combustion solver, we have a few different like display settings. So we've got, for example, you can see the fuel. So this is actually the input fuel. Then there's, then there's the heat. So this is the heat. So you can see actually it's a bit different to the, you'll see why, how, how that affects the simulation in a moment. And then you can actually see the velocity and also you can actually see what the actual input is. So that's actually for an input texture. So we'll talk about that in a minute. So now actually like, let's go back to simulation and let's go, let's have a look at the input panel. So the input actually, we have four different types of input. We've got the painting fuel, the flow, the prefab and the mouse. Now the prefab we already have seen very similar to the, in the fluid, you just basically have a, have a prefab, which is your input system. And that's something which you can have input to your simulation. But on top of that, you have these two things where you can actually paint, for example, the fuel. So unlike the other one, this actually this texture actually blends with 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 the input texture. So input prefab, I'm sorry. So for example, if I just change it to that, you can see this texture is like there, and um, you see that one's still actually like driving inside. So I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna create a new one here, and you can see if I clear it, I can draw, actually draw on it. So, and that is actually getting, so this is different to the fluid simulation where that when you draw, it doesn't have any effect. It doesn't stay around. This actually is just basically a drawing thing. So you can draw on things. So you can choose the strength and you can draw, you can draw and like, you know, paint it out. It's quite, it's quite rudimentary. You can just put your own textures in there, but like, it's just there for cause it's like, you might want to do try out a few things before you, it's just a kind of experiment. So, so here we, so that's, that's the input texture. And then you, uh, that, but that's as, a, as fuel. And then you also have the input flow map, so you can actually like sort of draw your flow map. So if I just if I show you like this, for example, I'm I'm like pushing it around, and it's basically adding that flow that flow map to it. So it's, you can see it's developing the flow map. Click save to sort of keep the settings you've done, or you can clear it. The this is kind of similar, so we can actually just like you know use the swirl, and it's very similar to what we had on the other thing, where where you can use the the same texture, so um, to be able to sort of do all your flow. So let's just reset it. So you can see this, this this texture gets saved with the settings of the when you click save. So so that texture will be kept and you will it will it will be with the preset. So we've also got mouse, which is kind of similar to what similarish to like what what's going on with the fluid simulation. You've got like but this is kind of all just kind of live and it's really just just to sort of like for you to try things out. Um, and okay, so the next thing we're going to talk about is the simulation. And just just before I kind of move on, I just remember to say you want to see your, what you're painting. You can just click on go to to see the input, and then the thing you're actually painting will be what will be example here. You can actually see the map you're painting. So that's for your debug, debugging. You can have a look at that. So okay, so then next let's go on to the simulation. So this is actually where we can drive how the behavior of it, it's how it behaves. So basically we have some important ones as fuel fade and heat fade. So what would be really useful for actually, maybe if I just do this, I'm gonna give it some completely different colors for my fuel from my fuel to my heat. Actually, it really should be the other way around. Let me just uh, let me do that and just change the, so we've got actually a different gradient. Okay, right. So you can see actually right now we've got a heat and fuel quite similar in, in there, I think. but if I fade out the fuel, you'll see the fuel is faded out and now it's kind of really mapping the heat as, as that gradient. So, and that heat, could you, if you go up, you see that heat is just kind of driving all the simulation from that then on. But if, so what we've got is, we've got a, a way to sort of basically heat fuel in the, you know, just sort of to start off to be a start off color, but you can actually do it the other way around. So maybe you know, there's like heat at the beginning and the heat fades out quite quickly. And then like that goes to this. So that's like if you're having smoke. So actually here's an example where I did all of that. It's fire and smoke. It's just yeah. There you go. I use it sort of for the for the fuel. I'm using more of a kind of smoky gradient, and then like the fire part is actually from the heat. So basically, and as the heat kind of dissipates, then it goes into the fire and smoke. So it's a it's a lovely way for you to sort of kind of control where where the different colors kind of blend. That's all on the gradient remap as well. I can talk about the other ones. They're a bit more simple, and they don't really have this kind of 
well, actually, the color remap will do similar idea. So you've just got single color as opposed to having gradient. You've got single color for the heat and single color for the for the, for the sort of basically fuel. So you can see it's like a pinky fuel. You can go for a bluey, purple blue fuel. Get some really magical results that. So now I can talk a bit more about the velocity fade as well. So velocity, you can see if you reduce it down, it'll fade really quickly. So the velocity will fade. Um, now actually you notice how the fire is always kind of going up. This is from buoyancy and weight. So this is unlike the other one where it's like you're giving a specific vector. This is the actual behavior of this is based on kind of physics, like as if it's like, you know, it's got some kind of buoyancy to it. So you can have something go, buoyancy will kind of make it kind of float up, whereas weight will make it drip down. So you can like, if you get the right balance of these things based on the amount of like fuel that there is, you can get it kind of like going up and splitting down and you can just like have a play, play to sort of get this sort of things. Also together that there's the ambient temp temp temperature, which affects basically the, when the reaction speed. So when the smoke will kind of like react. So all of these things you can like, it's all kind of, you know, just tweak them uh, tweak them around until you get like sort of you know cool little results you know just getting the right kind of balance between buoyancy and and, um, and weight can really like you know get you some like cool things then also of course like the other um, solver there's the iterations this is um, the higher the iteration slower the simulation but the more more better it'll behave so if you go really low you can see it's just it, the swirls will kind of reduce it starts looking very kind of soft and sort of not really kind of you know realistic and then the more you go up, the more you really start seeing like, you know, little like magical swirls. As you find that this, uh, this solver, you can, uh, the combustion solver, you can get these kind of like real swirly, maybe more easily than the other one that we're having. To, so it's, it's kind of, it can be very useful for doing these kind of big smoky kind of effects. The, and then time increments, the, the, start, the solver itself uses the time increments. So if you increase, if you increase it, it's going to make way more steps. It's going to go much faster. And if you reduce it, it's going to slow it down. This, this doesn't, it's not completely like deterministic. So you can't get the, the effect to be like exactly like the same when you slow it or speed it up. But if you're trying to get somewhere quicker, to, you know, to, to a quicker thing or a slower thing, you might want to start set this to where you want and then tweak the values. So that basically sort of sums up the simulation. And so we can kind of just finish off um, talking about the output and how the spe a few specific details that are different for the outputs when it comes to the combustion solver. Now I'm going to talk about the output for the combustion. Have a look at the fluid combustion part just to sort of know the basics of this. But there are a few, a few specific differences in here. We've obviously got the gradient remap and there's actually two gra uh, gradients we can remap. One is the heat and one's the fuel. So actually you can see here when we look at the heat, this, uh, this is what the gradient will be remapping here. And, and, and then the fuel, this is basically, you can see that's why the fuel is actually the very, very strong fuel at the moment. So that, that's why we're able to have all of this dark smoke current carrying on even where the heat has like, dissipated. So I'm just gonna just reduce the size of this mouse. Okay, so the, the other thing to sort of understand is actually the remapping. So we actually have remapping values for each of these. So basically if I, if I change that value, reduce it, it's gonna get much stronger. If I up it, then it's going to much be much softer. So you can kind of like work out, get get the kind of feel for how this this gradient is going to be remapped to your to your heat. And the same when it comes to this. So if I uh, if I up it, it's going to kind of get much softer. If I go lower, then it's going to be super strong. So that's that's a cool way to sort of tweak how your final results will be. Then there's obviously the same sort of things we've got instead of like the choice between density alpha. Here we have a choice of fuel alpha. So fuel alpha obviously uses the, the fuel here. So if I show you the fuel, it uses this value for the alpha. If you cut that off, then it's actually going to take the alpha value of the fuel. Um, so that is, that is the main differences. Oh, then obviously then we've got color remap, which I mentioned earlier. It's a similar idea. You've got like a color for the heat and the color for the fuel. And you've got remap values as well in the same kind of way, so they can use that. And then the simple color is in, in, in much in the same way as the fluid has color. This will actually take the input, the input color as the input to the simulation. So you can see kind of like how that affects the. So if I change the so change the values, you can see it sort of comes to like but like ink and ink and liquid and stuff when it goes through. So kind of you get some really fun results.